What if we nuke a city? It's a doomsday scenario that some Americans have feared since the Cold War. A nuclear bomb hits a city, setting off a flashlight, a giant orange fireball, and building toppling shockwaves. The world has changed in the decades since the Cold War, but world leaders still threaten each other with nuclear weapons. There are currently at least 2,000 tons of weapons-grade nuclear material stored in some 40 countries, enough to make 40,000 bombs. Many experts think the danger of a nuclear strike is higher than it has been in decades. This being said, it would be shockingly easy to nuke a city, but what would happen if we did it? Before we look at this, a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it, and also to subscribe to Brain Impact for more videos just like this one. But now, back to the explosions. So what exactly is a nuclear explosion? Nuclear explosion occurs as a result of the rapid release of energy from a high-speed nuclear reaction. It then produces radiation and radioactive debris. It's inevitable that if this were to happen, it would cause devastation. There have only ever been two nuclear weapons deployed in combat. These were back in 1945 during World War II. The first event occurred when the United States Air Force dropped a uranium gun-type device, codenamed Little Boy, on the city of Hiroshima, killing 70,000 people. The second event, three days later, was again courtesy of the United States Air Force. Only this time, it was a plutonium implosion-type device, codenamed Fat Man, that was dropped on the city of Nagasaki. This explosion killed 39,000 people. In total, around 109,000 people were killed in these two explosions. These days, nuclear weapons may be stored by various countries, but there is a reluctance to use them due to the complete devastation they would cause. So now let's look at what exactly would happen if we were to nuke a city. Aside from the initial explosion, to start with, there would be an immense shadow over the city due to the mushroom cloud. The mushroom cloud is made up of debris, smoke, and usually condensed water vapor. The shadow would subsequently drop the temperature in the city, forcing warmer air to rush in and violently destroy countless buildings. The radioactive ash and dust would liquefy, resulting in black rain pouring down on the city. On top of all this, there is the blinding light, bright enough to blind anyone up to 13 miles away on a clear day, and up to 53 miles away on a clear night. There are numerous fires caused by the intense heat of the explosion. Metal, fabric, plastic, and clay would ignite, melt, or blister. The intense heat would set gas lines, fuel tanks, and power lines on fire, and an electromagnetic pulse created by the explosion would knock out most computers, cell phones, and communications towers within several miles. Traveling much further than the fireball, a colossal pressure wave would hurtle forth faster than the speed of sound, generating winds up to 500 miles per hour. The shock wave would demolish the flimsiest buildings and strip the walls and roofs off stronger structures. It would snap utility poles like toothpicks and rip through trees, fling people through the air and turn brick, glass, wood and metal into deadly projectiles. A blast in Times Square combined with a fireball, would carve a crater 50 feet deep at the center of the explosion. The shockwave would reach a diameter of nearly 3.2 miles. After the explosion and shockwave has passed, there will be the radioactive material that was propelled into the upper atmosphere, falling from the sky, more commonly known as nuclear fallout. Millions of people would be affected. No hospitals would withstand the blast, so people that are lucky enough to survive won't be able to get the medical attention they need. Doctors and nurses would be either dead or injured. There would be no electricity or water, and no one would be able to bring meaningful relief to victims and survivors. Even if they could get through the fires and rubble, they would not have the sufficient equipment to protect against radiation. The radiation released instantaneously by an explosion is only a prelude to the much more insidious and long-lived threat. If, by some miracle, you manage to survive a nuclear explosion, it is inevitable that the radiation would leave you with a death sentence of cancer or genetic damage. It has been 75 years since the horror of the bombs dropped in Japan. After the war, Hiroshima tried to reinvent itself as a city of peace and continues to promote nuclear disarmament around the world, and we can only hope they succeed. What do you think of the storage of nuclear weapons? 
Is it a deterrent to others or just asking for trouble? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.